yourself to the dark side. As you wish my master. Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Review. Today, let's take a look at the Hasbro Star Wars Black Series, Lucasfilm 50th Anniversary, Kier Kanos and Darth Maul, Sith Apprentice. And that's right, I said Kier Kanos, even though the package says Corner Jacks. Right after this was solicited about a month ago, or maybe a little bit longer, Hasbro came out and said, oops, we meant to say Kier Kanos. Because that's Kier Kanos. All the pictures around the edge is Kier Kanos. The inside, this cover that they pulled this from, originally said the end of Kier Kanos. And then the figure itself, Kirkanos. But the bio is Karner Jax, you know, going to the dark side of the Force, portraying the Brotherhood, it takes over Empire. Not a big deal to me. I mean, Karner Jax has a more interesting color scheme, I think, but this is Kirkanos. That's all there is to it. And then I don't remember actually reading the issues with Darth Maul when he's all shirtless and sexy, but um, it's a cool looking figure, so... I had to have it. Looking at the package, we kind of already went over this. They take some comic art, put it on the front, Lucasfilm 50th anniversary logos, warning, small parts. Do not put them in your mouth. Around the outside edge, again, more comic art, just panels pulled from the source material, give you an idea of the figures you're getting. On the back, <laughs> nothing about the figures themselves. 50th anniversary, a timeline, attention, warning, small parts. Do I even have to say it? On the other side, Connor Jacks, Darth Maul, Sith Apprentice, again, nice, pretty pictures. There's Velcro tabs up here on the top corner, add a little fancy to it. And inside the cardboard sandwich, it's pretty much the standard Black Series packaging. In fact, the box probably comes out if you really, really wanted to. On both is comic art, bios for each. Let's see what's going on here. Tape holder tray. Oh, God, what the... <laughs> Sith training. Looking at Kier Kano's first simply because it is 99.5, well it's probably safer to call it 95%, but it is mostly reuse of that first Royal Guard figure. When I first got this figure and I pulled the cloak back and saw the armor underneath, my first thought was, ooh, they're gonna make a Connor Jax and a Kier Kano's out of that. And here we are. And I say mostly reuse because the cape on the first one comes down like we saw in Return of the Jedi. For Kier Kano's, it's a completely different cape with some Ooh, some disco flare on the inside. It's double layered, so it's a little heavier than what we saw with that first one. This one bunches up nicely, and you can bring it around and make it look a bit natural. This one likes to stay flat, just kind of hangs around them. It's not terrible, it's just, <laughs> it's noticeably different. And if you don't like that purple on the inside, you can fold it, and there's your red cape, there's your red cape. But if you dig that shiny, reflective, sparkly purple, you can put it to the outside. And that is fairly accurate to the comic covers, or what we saw in a few places at least. Oddly enough, I don't know if it was a comic thing or not, but the visor on the Kirkanos, they painted it a darker red than the rest of the helmet. On the original, it was full black, and that's what I'm used to. So every time I look at this, it's, that's weird. Also on the new one, they went for a more plasticky red. On the original, it's a nice kind of shiny red, deeper, darker, and it looks comic booky. Here, a little bit more toy-like. But they did go for different reds between the armor bits and the cloth parts. And there's even some paint apps on the side that is yet another different red because they were going to bring the black costume in part. Kirkanos wears a yeah, mostly black undersuit, red armor on top, but this definitely evokes the character. The belt and the crotch cover and the holster are all the same overlay. It kind of floats between. And then the sharpness of the armor bits coming down, the straps coming around. I like that they left the straps coming around the same red as the front, not the leggings. So it differentiates it just a little bit more. That overlay also has a butt flap coming around. Shoulder pads, shiny along with the chest armor, but just cloth to the arms, like we saw in Return of the Jedi. Not so much of what we saw in the comic books. In fact, if anything stands out to me the most, it's that the arms doesn't have the bracers that Kirkanos and Connor Jacks wore, and for Kirkanos, the sleeves should be black. Being an older figure, the articulation isn't the greatest, and because of the design, <laughs> that helmet just doesn't move even in real life. You gotta be a badass to fight with a trash can on your head that doesn't allow for any movement. But for the most part, especially this, I don't know why I'm infatuated with this purple shine. I guess because this is really gonna stand out on the shelf. But again, for the most part, Kirkanos. For Darth Maul, it's only about 50% reuse, maybe even less. I'm not 100% positive. I'm throwing out a lot of percentages out there and I don't really know what I'm talking about. The feet, the boots, and the legs are definitely reuse from that first Darth Maul. This is actually the more recent release with the photo real eyes. And I was going to say reuse all the way up to the, god this is hard to show, all the way up to the waist and it looks like the same sculpt there but it 
can't be the same piece because of Darth Maul's bare abs on the new figure. On the old one, it's kind of a cone and it stops. So they had to have re-sculpted that center piece because that's all one piece. There's no articulation or anything between there. And because of that, and probably my imagination, but I feel like the legs on the new figure go closer together than the old. I always had a problem with that. I'd stand it up and it always want to spread out. On the new one, it feels more solid, even though it may not be. It may be just me projecting my wants and needs of better stance. It holds so many of my hopes and dreams. But there's no reuse from the waist up. Torso, arms, even the head, it has a more sinister stare. And before you ask, you can probably switch the heads, but this is a dumbbell joint. This is the old ball and hinge. But anything is possible with the right tools and a lot of heat and some sharp blades and some dremeling and yeah. I had thought maybe Maul reused the naked torso under the Tatooine Luke. <laughs> But Darth Maul is definitely bigger, wider, more cut. Same goes for the arms. On Luke, it was a double elbow hidden under the cloth and much thinner. Darth Maul's a hinge and swivel, thicker arm. Plus, it has that new school ball at the bottom of the neck. Luke definitely didn't have that. Did I talk about the waist piece? The belt and the hangy downs are also different from the first Darth Maul. The first had cloth underneath. This one has a new piece hanging down in front that is separate from the sides. And while that looks similar, that is a different sculpt. I can't believe how much I like this new head better than the old one. The head is much more angry. We finally have a Black Series figure with the teeth showing and they went all out. Just looks nasty. Angry eyes look great painted under there. The horns sticking out, they are sharp. The details to the tattoos are very nicely done. They may not match the movie or every comic appearance, but as you go through pictures, you're like, the cheeks kind of look like that in that panel, and the chin kind of looks like that in that panel. Same goes for the chest and the arms. Very clean. Again, maybe not 100% accurate, but it works. In person, and maybe on camera, this seems like a brighter red than what was used on the head. The thing that stands out at me though is they didn't paint the hands. There should be tattoos running all the way down to the fingers, or at least a lot more black there. Going over articulation, like I mentioned, this big bucket on his head doesn't have a lot of movement. I feel like the joint is under there, but you get forward, you get back, no kind of tilt, just barely some turn. But as much as that shoulder pad looks like it gets in the way of the hinge at the shoulder, it does come up to 90. Rotates all the way around, hinge and swivel at the elbow comes up, uh, barely past 90. Rotation, swivel, and then up and down on the staff holding hand and on the trigger finger hand, so yeah. Ball at the torso, not a huge amount of movement, but not shabby. Ball coming out to the hip, goes forward, back, out, Swivel at the thigh. Double knee comes up. Oh, so close. I've got the bing. Hinge of the ankle goes all the way back. Forward crashes into the armor right there. Forward facing pin for rocker. For Darth Maul, there is a dumbbell joint at the top of the neck with a ball joint down at the bottom. Together can look up, can look down. So much tilt. That's why I love this dumbbell joint. Swivel. Butterfly joint at the shoulders. That's another big difference, I guess, from that naked Luke. It goes forward, goes back, hinge at the shoulder, comes up, swivels all the way around, hinge and swivel at the elbow, not the greatest range even though it looks like it cuts way down, rotates, hinge at the wrist, side to side. That's the same on both sides. Not great for lightsaber wielding. Ball joint mid torso, wish it crunched a little bit more but nice hula hoop. With the splits in the hangy down parts, the ball coming out to the hip can come all the way forward, back, out, um, about 45. Swivel at the thigh, double knee. Oh, <laughs> this is one of the first Black Series figures, right? The original Darth Maul. So those legs are double jointed, big and chunky. It's not cut out on the back of the joint itself. So it gets past 90, but... Hinge at the angle goes back, goes forward, forward facing pin for rocker. For accessories, Kirkanos comes with this same teeny tiny blaster that the Royal Guard came with. It's so small. And you can put it in the holster in the side, but because of its size and its shape, it doesn't really hold inside of it. Push really hard. It does hit a point where it kind of snags, but even then, oh well, don't do it now then. Whatever. But for my Royal Guards, I threaded it onto this two finger pistol hand on the left and I leave it underneath the cape. It's kind of a hidden weapon. Just in case your guard wants to go noisy cricket on them. But the big new thing here is what we saw in the comics. Their double-edged staff blade thing. Is it a vibro blade of some kind? Nice sculpting to the handle on the grip and then to these well, guards to keep your hands from slipping out onto the blades. And then on the end it's pretty symmetrical. It's both facing forward. The cool thing about the hand they gave the Royal Guard, you can put it like this and it holds their staff thing just like what we saw in the movie, but it also works really, really well with a double-bladed staff. It holds it 
awesome looking, very action oriented. Unfortunately, you get them into crouch positions or, or too action-y, you can't get him to look forward because the head goes nowhere. He can stand there looking like a badass. And then of course Darth Maul comes with his dual bladed lightsaber. Red blades look good. The hilt is way more silver than what we've seen before though. Then it also splits apart if you want to use it dual wield. Do the blades? Oh yeah, the blades do come out of there if you just want the hilt. The hole is D-shaped, so to put it back together you have to find that right flat spot put it back. It's hard to make Darth Maul look not cool. But if you want just a neutral position look, there's that peg on the side of the hilt and there's a hole on the belt, which looks insanely huge. It stays on as you move it around. Okay, I was never gonna display it like that anyway, but that's pretty spiffy. Ooh, or that. God damn, Maul has kind of a right lean and Kanos has a left lane, so they're kind of get together. Kyrkanos stands at about six and three sixteenths tall, while Darth Maul stands at five and thirteen sixteenths. Which makes Kanos slightly imposing over the Black Series new style Stormtrooper, but still looks good with the SH Figure Arts Emperor. Meanwhile, Maul looks appropriately smaller than the Black Series Episode 1 Obi-Wan, and then again the SHF Palpatine, which is just slightly larger than the SH Figure Arts Darth Maul, and then my custom using the Hero Masher's leg. Now, I want another one of these to slice in half, put on here, look much better. And hell, I never even painted the hand. So at the end of the day, two great characters are, well, a new look for an older character to add to the shelf, and that's always a good thing. But one of them's a little bit more fun to play with than the other. Can you guess which one? Kyrkanos is just stiff, and it's mostly the fault of the look itself. I mean, originally in the movies, they just stood there with that big pail on their head. And then in the comics, they tried to make them more badass. But I've talked to 501st members who wear this at shows and stuff, and they're like, yeah, there's no looking around. And with the lack of neck movement, that just kind of kills any action poses you want to do. But it's still cool to have this character on the shelf. Darth Maul, though, even with those old, outdated legs, because of the new parts from the waist up, and just how everything works together, yeah, it's a lot more fun. It's like Jackson from last week. It's using parts and pieces from older figures, but because of the new configuration and the added articulation in places, it just makes it almost a whole new figure. Plus, Darth Maul without a shirt just looks awesome. The Carner Jacks Kirkanos thing, yeah, it's a screwball on Hasbro's part. But for me, I, I, that's going away. I'll never see it again. But what I hope they do when Carner Jax becomes an action figure is they put it in Kirkano's packaging. Lean into it. You know, like the whole Forlom Zuckus thing from way back in the day. It's not an easy fix, but again, me personally, nah, it doesn't really matter. I just know I want that Carner Jax because it's a much more interesting color scheme with the blacks on top of the reds. Yeah, that looks sweet. But if you enjoyed the review, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus if you're interested in seeing videos early or in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. But wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on the foosh. Now that I have this Darth Maul in hand, I, I like it way more than I thought I would. It's just a different look. Hell, and that head going on the original Darth Maul body, it's so much better. This is such an upgrade, but it's not the Darth Maul that most people know and love.